Here in part 8, we're going to focus on the product page, which will be the page that puts your product on display when anybody clicks on the product in any various lists that it's in. And this is the page that will have your add to cart or buy now button on it, whatever you choose. And before we get into this lesson, we're going to have to discuss just a couple of things. That way we don't get ahead of ourselves. Now, if you already know what online payment processors are, and you are familiar with what they offer you as a merchant online, then you can just skip this whole crap right here that I'm about to say about the online gateways and what they offer. So PayPal is the king of online checkout thing. Google is close runner-up, I guess, in gaining ground. And so you have Google Checkout. You can be a, a merchant at Google Checkout. You can also be a merchant at PayPal, which means that you can offer your shoppers to check out with either Google Checkout or PayPal. Or you may choose to go with a private system, even at your local bank. They might even have software where you have your business account. They might have software that would allow you to tap into their online gateway service and they'll take a small fee from each transaction just like Google Checkout or PayPal would. Now with each of Google Checkout or PayPal or any other system really they give you a uh, free card software usually and they allow you to get in there as the merchant log into your account and create add to cart buttons, buy now buttons, donate buttons, gift certificate things, all kind of cool nifty things that you can use for making money online. Now at this point, when you have your items in the database, the uh, images for it, and you're ready to sell those things, you can use the Gateway's free card software. So whether you're a Google merchant or a PayPal merchant, you can use their free card software. And simply log into your merchant account, generate an Add to Cart button. You can put the details in, the name for the product, the price, everything, and it'll generate an encrypted button for you. Now PayPal over the years has had problems with people forging prices and things like that but now they have more secure button systems where the price can't be forged and Google Checkout uses a secure system as well so when you go and you create an add to cart button whether you use Google or PayPal you can choose to have it encrypted to where nobody can tamper with things but if you're using a card system a custom PHP card system what you want to do is get the code for the add to cart button and then make it dynamic by using the variables that they give you if you're a if you're looking at the developer documentation for those payment gateways and what I'm going to show you is the PayPal developer documentation since I'm more familiar with the PayPal side of uh, online transactions I've used Google a little bit but not as much as I've used PayPal over the years Now there's another option that they give you which is the buy now buttons which will direct the person right when they click that buy now button it will direct the person straight to Google Checkout or if you're using PayPal it will go straight to PayPal's secure server and it will allow the person to check out for that one item and it'll usually let them up the quantity or decrease the quantity there if you enable those options so the buy now button is really just to let somebody buy one thing real quick if they want seven of that one thing they can assign that when they get to the checkout at the payment gateway but what we're going to do is option three here. We're going to build a custom PHP card to have an in, a more in-house shopping experience. That way the person is, is never directed to the online gateway such as Google Checkout or PayPal when shopping with an add to cart buttons. So the person can put 20 items in their cart being on our site the whole time while doing that. If they're using the default free carts of the gateways, every time they put an item in their cart, they're going to be ushered to either PayPal or Google Checkout or whatever, where where the default cart software for you is on their site. Your cart session is on their site when you use the gateways free cart system. So if you use a custom PHP cart, which is what we're going to do, we're going to have a more in-house shopping experience, so where the person really never leaves our site until the very end when they're ready to check out for all the various items in their cart. Then they're going to be ushered to the online payment gateway. If you want to spend a little money, I think you can get either with Google Checkout or PayPal, you can get more advanced systems where the shopper would never leave your site at all, even through completion of checkout. So that's something you may want to look into, but we're not going to go that route in this lesson series. We're going to go just as far as assembling a cart full of items, and then they check out through 
the online gateway. Okay, so now all we have to do is make it to where when we click one of these products, we want the product.php page to render, showing all the details for that product. So let's go into Dreamweaver, and here we are with the index page. Let's just say file save as product.php. Since this page is pretty much virtually empty anyway, we're going to overwrite it. So index.php is just fine. We can actually close that. Now product.php, let's go into and say store home page. We're going to change that to some dynamic variable in the title tag here. This will be some kind of dynamic title for the product. Now we have to change this query up a little bit. We're going to leave this script error reporting right here in the top just so we force script errors to show every little thing that's wrong with the script if something happens to be wrong no matter what your php.ini file is set like. Now on this page before you connect to your database you want to make sure that the URL variable ID is set and that it exists within your database and that's a very simple check. So let's go right in between those two PHP blocks. Let's place a new one. And this one put a little comment. Let's say check. Check to see the URL variable is set and that it exists in the database. So that would be an if condition followed by an else statement. So we say if is set we'll use the is set function dollar sign underscore get all capital letters bracket single quote single quote bracket in between the two single quotes put ID if is set get ID we can access that ID so right here you just put ID is equal to get ID and using something like this you can be sure that you've cleansed the variable. That way nobody can put anything but a number into the URL because people can type and change the URL variables just by typing in the address bar. So you want to make sure that anybody types any funny characters in there, you get rid of them, you strip this whole variable of those, making sure it's only 0 through 9 type characters that can be in that variable after you use the preg replace function on it. So let's remove that. So you can see the get ID variables right there, and that's what's being cleansed using this preg replace function. So we're still going to do more with that ID, and we're going to use it to access the database and get all the information for this product out. But in the else condition, you want to make sure that you let the people know that there's new product. And really, this should never happen if they're using the site correctly in the system with that ID. So you can just echo out no product in the system with that ID. You can echo out some links there if you want to put links. I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm going to leave that up to you. But that this would only happen if any URLs get tampered with by anybody visiting the site. Which is not really a, a, a security concern. But that ID is not in the database. You really don't want the page to render. So you want to put exit right here. This page is really only going to render if this variable set and then if we find it in the database well actually this would be for if the get variable is not set so that means you would say data to render this page is missing that means the get ID variable is not set in the script which it always should be but inside this condition where we're going to access the database and see if this item exists we might echo a message and exit the script once again if we find that this actual ID does not exist in the system. If it does exist in the system, then we'll get the information out and let the page render. So here let's write ourselves a comment. Okay, so here we have a comment to ourselves. Use this variable to check to see if the ID exists in the database. If yes, then get the product details. If no, then exit this script and give a message why. right here we're going to have the SQL query to the database and your ID variable is already cleansed you don't have to use anything else on it so let's borrow this query right here let's pop it right there 
and we want it to read select all from products where ID equals single quote single quote and in between the single quotes you put this ID variable that we've just attained from the URL limit one so select all from products where ID equals this dynamic variables ID limit one now you can use this code here we have let's just take that and use it let's take those two lines let's pop them right under that query so let's indent this so if the product count is greater than zero get all the product details and right here we need the else condition that would mean the item does not exist so we can we can simply echo out again and exit right here because at this point you would know the item doesn't exist so you can say that item does not exist and really these things should never happen if people are using your site correctly but you just want to make little precautions and then you exit you can give links there whatever you want to do but here is where we're going to focus our efforts to get the data out of the get the data out of the array that came from this query so we can grab this while loop right here and we're going to slim it down just a bit because we're only going to need the variables right there where it says get all the product details pop in that while loop and you can get rid of that dynamic list variable altogether now let's indent this closing bracket for that while loop that way we don't lose ourselves here so the things we can get out of the database are let me grab the list right here let me just pop it right there product name which we're already getting we already have the ID so we don't even need to access that there product name price we're already getting that details we need to access so let's access that right here category and subcategory let's access the two of those as well let's make this one say details this one category this one subcategory date added we're already accessing and we're actually making it human readable so we're good to go right there now at this point that's all you have to do within your while loop because you're only accessing one row from the database one row of information and once you gather these variables into local PHP variables you can then use them down inside of your script inside of your HTML rather so you can just go ahead and remove this PHP block that originated on the index.php page you can just remove it you might want to keep that mysql close tag or mysql close function by doing that so you can have that mysql close function if you like right at the end of everything in your php block so do you see let's make sure you guys can see that if you need to It's a pretty logical way to to set that script up. We have the product name now. We can put that in the page title. This dynamic title here can be product name. Put a semicolon on that and use your PHP tab to echo out right there. And then in the title tag, you'll have that dynamic product name for the page. You, know, you can also put in meta tags for your description and keywords and use these variables peppered throughout alright now I'm gonna go into design view 
of product.php. I'm going to press Control S just to save my work here. I'm going to go to code view. No, what not. I said I'm going to design view. What you smoking, man? All right, so I'm going to make this page look the way I would want it to look for a product presentation. Now my store, my whole store is ghetto, and you would want to design yours a whole lot nicer. And I'm doing a lot of things very, very basic to keep things simple. So what I'm going to do is I have the image on that side. Here will be the product name. And I just statically wrote these variables in. But I'm going to go into the code view in a second and echo those variables out. And right here, my add to cart button will be there. So I'll have the add to cart button right there. When they click that, they're going to go to cart.php. And here I'm just going to do this real ghetto as well. I'm going to put a link to the actual image on the server. You know, some people opt to put uh, some kind of fancy gallery of there for their items. People can drag and zoom in on them. I'm definitely not going to be showing you how to do that in this lesson series. All right, so let's go into the code view and bring this thing to life. Uh, so right here where there's that table that was commented out from the index page, you can totally remove that. I had that lingering. But it serves no purpose here. So you can see there's where the body tag starts. There's our header template coming in. And here's our div ID for the page content there. And our two column table. That's our two column table right there. So all we have to do is make these render out. So I'm going to echo these. variables and these particular two variables I'm going to encapsulate in double quotes that way they render that's the easiest way I think to render two words together that are variables and the others we're just gonna leave the way they are like details I'm just gonna put a semicolon and then highlight the whole thing echo and that will echo the details right there and the price as well. Let's go echo and make sure we get a little semicolon on there to break this statement. What else is there? Product name, that one as well. It's going to get echoed out. All right. Now we got to get some dynamics in that picture. So right there, we have to have the ID echo out. So let's type in that ID variable, semicolon, highlight the semicolon and the ID variable only, echo. So it'll go to inventory images folder and grab that dynamic ID.jpg picture. And then here's the product name again so we can just grab this echo here. Since it's the same thing right there and I believe that is it so now you would just have to make get your add to cart code and put it right there which is very very simple so let's check out the design there we go now all we have to do is add the, the link to that image so you can just grab that URL and right where it says view full size image in that URL that's where you put that and I know that's real ghetto but like I said I'm doing things basic so when the user wants to see the image full size they can click that and it'll just be a little bit larger but you can let your your store admin upload any size picture that you deem necessary for the store to be laid out and designed the way you need if you need really big sharp images then that's what you take in from your admin system my admin system I wasn't even regulating the picture size they could have uploaded any size picture but maybe you want to regulate to a certain size or whatever you want to do I don't know it's up to you I'm not gonna spend forever on this whole thing I'm just gonna cover the basics and move along and I forgot my MySQL query uh, let's see I didn't connect to the database but that's a simple fix let's just open the index page and grab the query line there right there and that we're going to sync in right above our query. 
Actually, we'll sync it in first thing right there. Okay, so this is what I get, which is exactly what I wanted. If I click this, it shows me the hat full size. You can also choose to make that a pop-up new window. I'm just keeping it simple. So now it shows on the product page, black hat, the title, the price, and looks like we need to add a dollar sign to the price down here, right there. So we can put double quote, double quote, period. That'll put a dollar sign right in front of that price variable. Refresh, and there you go. There's your dollar sign. So we got 4.99 as a price. It's in the hats, clothing, category, subcategory. You can choose to display that or not. But this is the description. This is a black cap, and that can be as long as you want. So in part nine, what we're going to do is continue on, and we'll get the add to cart button in place that will lead the shopper to the cart that you build custom for your site. So if we're on the home page, click any item, you see? That's how it works. So we just add to, the, once we get the add to cart button on there, phew, we're smooth sailing. And this cool black shirt deflects uh, 50 caliber, up to 50 caliber bullets. You might want to buy that. The end of times is coming. Alright, see you in part 9.